Alrighty, so this is going to be a quick breakdown on how I plan to approach this project. Because what I have in front of me here is the concept art that I've selected for the modular assets pipeline. And I chose this one because I think it's got a lot of potential for breaking it apart and making a number of assets that can come together in a way that make a whole variety of well, variations. <laughs> um, and so I'm going to just do a quick... I've, I've been scribbling in the background, I've just got it over here. Um, but I'm going to do a breakdown of how I'm going to break this apart, how I plan to make a bunch of different assets for this, so that theoretically, like the, the end goal of this is for me to be able to make a whole street, like along a beach or something, a whole street of just these two buildings with a whole bunch of variations so it feels lived in, it feels like an actual city street. Because if you just grab these and duplicated them, obviously that's just it's just not going to work. It'll look terrible. So without any further mucking around, I'm just going to hide this and I'm just going to use crop to highlight these as I talk about them. So we got the original art there. Um, I identified that there's there's about four, or five, I think five pieces that I can do. So this main upside down white T shape is going to be the core of the tall building. Um, I'm going to separate that out, and as you can see over here where I've been sketching, I've separated out this white T piece, and it's going to be the core of the tall building, as I said. Um, and over here, there's four spaces for apartments. I've got them labeled A1 to A4 here. So, once you remove these things from the T, you're left with basically four sockets. And so over here, I started sketching out the two apartments that exist in the concept art and sort of from that style made two more. So the end goal here is to have a bunch of varied bleh, variant apartments that I can slot in. So I could have this, you know what, I'm just going to extend this a bit. I could have this whole apartment building made of the red ones, for example, I go bang 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 if I wanted. Or I could do two red at the top, two blue down the bottom, whatever I wanted. Like these would be able to be mirrored either side, so I don't have to design one for this side, then one for that side. I can just flip it, stick it in, it's all good. Um, they would hopefully, oh yeah, uh, not hopefully, I will design them so that they can be um, put in any slot. Like this one could be in the top, could be in the bottom, doesn't matter. It's all going to work together regardless. And so that means that I have a huge number of variations that I can then do for this tall building, just for the top part alone. Um, so then when I start duplicating this tall building, I can put on all these different things and it will look like a lived-in, built-up city. Of course, underneath, just down in here, we don't need to do this, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Whoop, just in there. So, under here, for both these buildings, there's these little stores. And if you look at the division between the building and the store, it's very easy to make like a flat sort of ceiling there and there where this is division so I can just create in the space any kind of store that I want. As long as it adheres to the footprint of the building above it, I can make a doctor's office, I can make a general store, I can make a restaurant, I could make all sorts of things under there. Um, a lot of them could be just simple sign changes and decoration out the front depends how in-depth I want to go with it, but by identifying that there's these areas underneath the apartments that I can play with, I now have these little segmented out areas where I, I do plan on creating some different stores. Because again, like if you keep repeating the same stores over and over, it's going to look just ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. So these stores are going to go underneath, we'll see, I don't have any plans, like concrete plans for how many or what kind of variants I'm going to do yet. I think I'm just going to sort of play it by ear and see how things go. I'll block out a few in the following videos and we'll see. Now of course the other one, besides the tall building, is this squat little building here. I'm actually going to remove this store as well. So this squat little building, which you can see is over here. Um, I identified two areas for this. One is the main building itself this big block with all the windows. Um, I may do windows down the side, um, but I'm definitely considering doing a longer version, so oops, a wider version, so maybe twice as wide again, so I could do a longer store underneath it. 
But not only do I have this area here, but I've also got the rooftop. Because in the original, you can see just over here, the original has this nice little division along the top where there's this, this little wall thing. And so I figured, well, I could do the same wall rooftop thing for every single building, but it would be very easy to cut out that rooftop, make it its own little asset, and then create a bunch of variants. So I've got noted down here, of course, the garden, the pool, the tennis court, just little things that I can put up there that would change it up. Uh, of course, the pool would need to be higher, so I would copy that wall design, extend it up, and then do maybe like another little decorative wall on top, and then the pool. Of course, that would create the illusion of extra height for this particular variant of the building. So you'd get variants in color, variants in height and shape. You'll have plants coming over one of them. You'll have tennis court, flags, whatever I want to do on the other ones. So it will create not only different colors. Get that down. Not only different colors of this building and, of course, the different width of it. But it'll have a whole bunch of different things on top. So the end result of this is you've got three modular assets being swapped in and swapped it out over here. So that's quite a few there. You've got different stores underneath, different shapes up here, and all that. And that's that's good for a base. I think that's uh, a solid base to work from to be able to create a whole bunch of different buildings that all sort of follow the same theme. Um, but to top it off, to make this really come together, I've also got, where is it? There it is. I also identified these key areas here. You've got little designs that basically just add more flavor to the building. Um, in the original sketch, I did sketch up the sign and little radar dishes and whatnot. But after I realized that these are a whole bunch of different things that you can move around and change very easily, I figured, well, let's cut out the plants. Let's cut out the aircon units, the signs, the flags, all the sort of signage and stuff like that. Cut that all out and just bring it down to the very base level. Even these little window bits, which I didn't highlight, which I will highlight right now just for my own note. Just get that color there. Uh, these little windows here. Um, so what I could do is I could make up a little sign that has the sticks holding it in. It's like blah, blah, blah. Then I could do a bunch of different textures for the sign, then plug that in here. I could do a bunch of different radar dishes here, aerials, antennas, like one that's just like rawr and plug that in here with the little radar dishes and whatnot. So with very little effort, I can create different types of junk on the building, basically. Um, these little windows, of course, I'll just do them on the building itself. I'll do the sunken windows, recessed windows like this. And then I'll do just a little cute little shade cell thing, like you can see there, for the windows, so I can pop it up at any angle, so I can have different angles, I can have it down, I can have it up, I can have them not there at all, just again to create more flavor for it. Um, aircon units of course, I'll, I'll swap them around, move them around, different sizes, different shapes, maybe different colors, we'll see how we go. Um, I've also got an external aircon unit here, which again, I can just make that by itself, probably the same thing as that, I don't know. And I can just stick that on anywhere, like some of these, like I might stick an aircon unit there, little shade sails here, that sort of thing. Um, and then the, of course the plants for the balconies and whatnot. It's just all little stuff around here that can help make a huge difference. It's basically modular assets in modular assets. And with all this extra flavor stuff, it means that I can really... Hang on, let's get my mouse back. Uh, yeah, with all this extra flavor stuff, it means that I can really create the sense of the building being lived in. It's unique, because everyone who's owning these apartments would have their own flair that they'd add to it. And by adding all this extra flair on top, it makes each of them feel completely unique. Because it's not entirely unreasonable to think that an architect would design a bunch of buildings in this style. Like, just copy-paste them down the road. That's totally fine. But it looks bad in a game world or whatever you're doing, in a render or whatever you're using it for. It looks bad if they're all completely identical. So adding in all these little flavors, it's sort of like, okay, yeah, sure. These buildings were copy-pasted by the architect, but the people who live in them have then added their own flair to it. And that's what these little extra assets are going to do. They're going to be, I guess, 
you could call it like a rich goal. Like it's not going to be my priority. My priority is going to be getting these basic shapes up. Once those basic shapes are done, everything's textured and whatnot, then I'll go and look at these extra flavor things. Because um, the extra flavor things are what's really going to sell this build. But they're not necessary for the thing to work. Because of course I'm making all these different assets for the core anyway. So there'll be enough variation to get me through. But that's pretty much the plan. We'll see how we go. Um, I think the stores are going to be quite tricky to make a bunch of different stores. Uh, the buildings themselves I think are going to be fine. I know I'm going to have difficulty with the garden because I don't have a lot of experience making plant life and sort of organic stuff. I'm very much a hard surface modeler. So, you know, all these sort of things, all these little extras are going to be fine until I come to the trees. Then it's going to be a little trickier. But I'm sure I'll pull through. I'm sure I'll be fine with it. Um, if not, I may just cut out the trees entirely. <laughs> we'll see how we go with that. But, uh, yeah, this should be fairly straightforward to do. Um, I don't foresee too many difficulties with it. But yeah, that's the plan. Um, I really like this concept art. It's, it's cool. It's fun. It's got lots of color. It'll be good. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned. I'm also going to do different maybe tintable textures for these. So I'll make them in like black and white and then you can just tint them for whatever color. So even though these are the same little shape there, C shape, have whatever color you want. And that's another way to just really easily make these, make a whole bunch of variations of this. But yeah, that's the plan.